Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we have got a Mr. Nightmare video. Just make sure my Wi-Fi is turned up. It is 3K True High School Reunion Horror Stories from Mr. Nightmare. We don't get right into it later, so I'm hit the like button and subscribe on the comments thing down below. Let's go. My 10-year high school reunion was coming up. I didn't originally plan on going, but my friends convinced me. The reunion was in August on a Saturday. It was organized by a group of people from our graduating class, and it was going to be held at some catering hall in a nice area of town. It had been a long time since I'd seen any of these people, minus my handful of friends from high school who I'd be going with. I really... If I did a reunion for any year of my school, not a fucking soul will remember me. Do you know how many people I've run into in my school that have no knowledge of who I am? There's so many people in my that I went to like public school or high school that have no fucking clue and no memory of me at all. I really didn't want to go because I didn't like a lot of the people from my high school and making small talk with a hundred people I hadn't seen in ten years sounded awful. But I also felt like if all my friends went and I didn't, I'd feel like I was missing out. When the night of the reunion finally came, I drove to my friend Kayla's house, and our two other friends Marissa and Sophia came as well. We were pre-gaming at her house, then we ended up calling an Uber from there. The reunion started around 8, so we got there fashionably late at 9. We stepped into the party hall, and right away familiar faces everywhere, only older looking versions of everyone. There had to be at least 80 to 100 people here, and it was more than I was expecting. Being with my friends made it easier to say hi to people I hadn't seen in forever. The vibe honestly was a bit different than I was expecting. There was a DJ, party lights, and a generally loud atmosphere, whereas what I was expecting was a quiet, intimate setting focused heavily on talking. People were getting really drunk at this, including my friends. We sat at a table with some other girls from high school. It was about 10 of us at the table. As the night progressed and everyone mingled and caught up with different people, I found myself feeling a bit awkward as my friends were doing their own things. I was alone at the table eating, and I noticed a guy who I didn't recognize at another table, looking in my direction. When we locked eyes, I looked away, but I wondered who he was. I glanced back for just a second and noticed he was still looking at me. Next thing I knew, he was coming over to sit next to me. He told me his name was Connor, and he started hitting on me immediately, saying he saw me across the room and couldn't help but come over and say hi. He was honestly decent looking, and I felt awkward sitting alone anyway, so I really didn't mind him sitting there. I said, I don't recognize you. Did you go to our school? He said, yeah, everyone's been saying that. I transferred to your guys' school our senior year. I didn't meet a lot of you. I basically said, oh, that's interesting. Who do you actually know here? He replied that he's just friends with a couple guys who are also here. I asked their names, and he gave first names only. I guessed the last names, and he said yes to both as he laughed. We talked for a while until he asked for my number so that he could go back to his friends. I gave it to him and walked away. Overall impression was that he seemed normal and I- Look. Alcohol took its toll here, cause this is not smart thinking at all. Random dude you don't recognize who can't give you the name of people who will just say yes to whatever last name you can think of, right? N nothing about this guy seems like a good move. I enjoyed talking to him. You, you, you got yourself in trouble you shouldn't have gotten into. Now I was left alone again. So after finishing my food and drink, I went to find my friends. They were all separated, talking with different people. Some people who I wasn't the biggest fan of. I went over to Kayla, who was mid-conversation with a few people, and I joined the conversation. My friends were all wasted. I was definitely drunk, but not on their level. I kind of wanted to just go home. It almost felt like a saving grace when Connor texted me asking me if I needed a ride home since he's leaving. I texted him back, yes please. He told me to meet him in the lobby of the building. So I looked around and then decided to just do an Irish exit. Too many people to say goodbye to. I saw Connor in the lobby by the front door. We walked to his car. It was a black two-door that already seems like a- Listen, I'm sorry, there's too much that- No. 
Look, woman, you put yourself in too many scenarios. This is just... Now, I'll give someone credit, right? If they're going to a go-after thing, I don't know if a high school reunion is what I'd go with. If I plan to do something to someone, don't think that'd be my target point, but the hell, I gotta work for this guy, I guess. Coop. I honestly don't know what it was. I'm not a car person. He asked me to put my address into his phone. I thanked him for doing this as we started to drive. He pulled a couple water bottles from the back seat and handed me one, and he suggested I drink a lot of water to avoid a hangover tomorrow. So I started to sip some water. Suddenly my phone started blowing up. Kayla was calling me, and Marissa and Sophia were also texting me in our group chat. I didn't pick up the call, but I read their texts. They were asking where I went, and I told them I got a ride home. They kept pressing me, asking with who, and Kayla said check the Facebook group that organized the reunion. Then Marissa sent a screenshot of a post made by a girl in the Facebook group, warning everyone of a random guy who wasn't from our school going around talking to girls introducing himself as a different name to everyone. Fucking... Uh... Okay, first of all, hold on. If this is a thing that was known that was happening, why did no one throw his ass out? Was everyone so drunk, no one had the right thought mind to throw the random guy who's not from the school out? Kayla tried calling me. I pressed decline and texted her I'm with this guy named Connor. She replied in all caps that someone said that she saw me leave with that guy. I wanted to actually vomit now. I looked at the guy, and then I evaluated the situation. I had to run when I had the chance. The next time we were stopped at a red light, I opened the door and said I gotta go and ran as fast as I could. I ran into this parking lot of a TGI Fridays. He didn't chase after me, he just kept driving. I called Kayla back right then and there, and she told me to wait here, they'd all Uber over here and pick me up. I waited in this parking lot for like 15 to 20 minutes until they arrived. By this point, I started feeling extremely drunk, lightheaded, and a foggy memory. I believe he had put something in that water bottle to try and sedate me. Thankfully, I didn't drink that much. The worst part about this was that the guy now had my apartment address. We all slept at Kayla's house that night. The next morning, I drove home, but shortly after entering my apartment, there was a knock at my door. I freaked out thinking it was that guy, but I saw it was my neighbor through the window. I opened the door, and my neighbor asked me if I knew the guy who came to my apartment last night and was looking through the windows. I told him all about last night. He was appalled too. He said when he confronted the guy, the guy asked him if this was where Miranda lives. My neighbor was wise enough to say no, you have the wrong apartment. My neighbor doing this just may have saved me from that guy ever coming back. When my lease was up, I moved to a different apartment in the same community, just to be safe. I'm super grateful my friends all tried to warn me in time before it was too late. Yeah. Now you know better, never leave your friend. never, just stay with your friends in every scenario. I don't care if your friends are as drunk as they can get and you want to leave. You stay there so you don't go for some random fucking guy. Sorry to anonymous. My high school does five and ten year reunions. My five year reunion was a few years ago. My high school was on the smaller side with around 200 kids per grade. So just about everyone knew everyone even if just partially. For the five-year reunion, it was being held in a small banquet hall in town. I was excited to go see all my old friends who I hadn't seen in forever. Of course, arriving to these things alone can be a bit scary, so my friend Julia and I were going to go together. Julia has been my best friend ever since middle school. She knows about everything that I've been through, and I know about everything that she's been through. That includes the situation I had with a boy named Tyler. Tyler was a boy who I had a little bit of history with meaning we hooked up a few times senior year. But he quickly started giving me crazy and obsessive vibes, and when I cut him off, he threatened me and got aggressive. He sent me threatening texts, like he knows where I live and he knows when my parents aren't home and more. One night he came to my parents' house and threw rocks at my window, and my dad had to go outside and chase him away. As time passed, I guess he lost interest in harassing me. Tyler was friends with some of the... What? how a reunion starts. 
that is how reunion starts completely right. That is how reunions go bad. Is the guy who's a creepy, obsessive stalker who likes to harass people ends up showing up at your reunion. I guess you'd say weirder kids in high school. Not the athletes, not the cool kids, not the gothy kids, just the slightly weird group. When word got out that he'd been harassing me, a lot of people grew to hate him. I just hoped he wasn't going to be at the reunion. Julia and I got to the venue it was being hosted at and did our rounds saying hi to a bunch of people. There was a solid 50 people there at the peak of the night, which was a solid turnout considering the small size of our grade to begin with. At some point in the night though, I got a tap on the shoulder from none other than Tyler. When I turned to see him, I felt my heart sink. He said, hey, can we talk? It had been years since I'd spoken to him, and that was the first thing he said to me. I said something along the lines of, hey, I hope you're good, but there's nothing to talk about, and I tried to walk away. He grabbed my shoulder and spun me around and said, you're already going to be like that? I pushed his hand off of me and said, let go of me. He looked around nervously and said, all right, all right, and walked away. I could tell he didn't want the negative attention. This now ruined the mood of the night for me, as I had to try my hardest to avoid looking at or going anywhere near Tyler. I noticed he was with one of the kids I remember him hanging around in high school. I got into a conversation with Julia and a few other girls about the situation with Tyler, and how he just grabbed me moments ago. Everyone was on my side and agreed he'd always been a weirdo creep and was known for being aggressive with girls. Oddly enough, I didn't really see him again after I saw him with his friend. I assumed he left early, which was a major relief for me. Julia and I stayed for a few more hours, then we left with a few other girls to go to a dive bar nearby. And then, after another hour or so, Julia dropped me off at home. As I walked up to my front door, I noticed another car pass by Julia's car and continue driving down the street. Considering the hour and how quiet the street is, that was concerning. It was a Jeep Cherokee. Maybe it was paranoia, or maybe I was rightfully curious, but the next day I looked up Tyler's Instagram. He was private. I requested to follow him with my fake account, which yes I have for situations like this. He accepted my follow request, but I couldn't see any pictures of a Jeep, or any car for that matter. This made me feel slightly more at ease. I live alone, so my worst fear was Tyler finding my new address and coming to my house at night. The next day, Tyler DMs me on Instagram a long message, trying to manipulate me into seeing him. All these years later, he was still giving me obsessive, creepy vibes. I blocked his Instagram, but I never could have imagined what that would have led to next. The same night I blocked him, I woke up to my doorbell ringing at 1am, repeatedly. I was so scared. It had to be Tyler, I just knew it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't exactly have my dad here to chase him away like all those years ago. My parents live in Florida now. The doorbell ringing turned to angry sounding pounds on the door, booming through the apartment. This pounding went on for some time, and then the doorbell again, over and over and over. I finally- Call the cops! Just call the cops! Finally went to the door, and it stopped. I peeked out the window at the top of the door, and nobody was outside. I slept with one eye open that night, and then the next day, my friend's dad helped me out and contacted his detective friend in our hometown. He came by the house and took pictures of the texts, from years ago and the long DM from just a few nights before. He then contacted Tyler and gave him a verbal warning to seize all contact or this would be considered stalking and harassment. So far it's worked. It makes me wish we went to the police all those years ago. Some people are dangerous and simply don't change. No. I hope he's not at the 10 year reunion. That isn't. Look, the high school. I, I'll never go to a high school reunion. I mean, I'll never be invited to one even if they do them here. Ain't no one gonna invite my ass. No one will remember I even went to high school. That's how bad mine's gonna be. I was seeing this girl for a few weeks. We'd been on two dates. Her name was Phoebe. We matched on a dating app and eventually met a few days later. She was four years older than me. Our first date was drinks and our second date we went out with my friends on a weekend. My friends had neutral opinions about her. They thought she was quote, nice and kinda quiet. They'd later reveal their actual thoughts on her but I'll get to that later. 
Phoebe invited me to an upcoming high school reunion party. She told me she didn't want to go alone, and honestly after she came to hang out with my friends and I, I felt like I owed her. This reunion party was falling on a random Saturday in the fall. It wasn't organized by her school though. She told me that it was organized by this rich guy from her class, and it was being hosted at his house. I haven't had my high school reunion yet, but as far as I know, these things are usually held at bars or catering halls. We got to this guy's house, and it was admittedly a fancy looking house. Look, this just looks, this to me, sounds like how people get set up in movies for like, die, die, how they die. You know, they bring you into this party with this rich guy, and it turns out only one can leave. One will survive. House. It had a gated driveway, but no fancy cars parked anywhere in sight. My thought was maybe the owner parked his car in the garage during the party. The second we stepped into the house, I felt like everyone was staring at us. More specifically, me. A few people came up to Phoebe and hugged her hello, then shifted their attention to me. I felt almost like I was being interrogated with some of the questions these people were asking me. Like my whole life story, what I... What is this, the fucking one mo What's the movie called? What's the movie called? What's the movie called I'm thinking of? Where it's a black guy who goes to a white family when they do like this big family reunion thing. And it's all white people. There's this one black dude and then they end up tying him up because they plan to cut his brains out and give it to a white person thinking that will help them out and all that. You all know the movie. What's the movie called? If you're in the con if you watch this, you know what the movie I'm thinking of is. Let me know, cause I'm, I'm I know what it is, but I don't know the name of it. I do for a living. Who I live with. Finally, Phoebe pulled us away, only to go talk to more people who I also felt like were asking really personal and weird questions. There was also something about all the people in here. They seemed to be older looking than 28, which was the age Phoebe told me she was. Some of these people looked well into their 30s. I made a comment on that to Phoebe. She said, yeah, some of these people aren't aging too well. I asked if she remembers all these people, and she said yes. I then asked who the party host was. I was curious to meet the owner of this big house. She said she hadn't seen him yet. Throughout the entirety of me being there, I felt like everybody was shooting me daggers. They wouldn't look away either. I whispered that to Phoebe, and she said back it's probably because they're wondering who I am. At the time, that was the only logical explanation I could think of, too. It's hard to explain the growing awkwardness at this party, but I- Look. Look, I'll make, trust me. I'll tell you something right now. If, I, if this happened to me, if you want to look at me and make me the center of attention, I will make myself the center of fucking attention. I can assure you, this was not what a normal high school reunion would be like. No. There was no music and everyone was dressed weirdly, not like normal 28 year olds. But that's the other thing. None of these people looked like they were in their 20s. I was getting uncomfortable with some of the stares I was getting in the room we were in. So I told Phoebe I'm going to run to the bathroom. Realistically, I just wanted to get out of that room and explore the house a little bit. I didn't have a drink in my hand or anything to make me feel at ease. I was just walking around this giant house empty-handed. And anyone I passed stared at me. To say I felt out of place would be the understatement of the century. I found the bathroom. I stepped inside even though I didn't have to go. I locked myself inside just to sit and regather myself, take a break from the awkwardness outside. <laughs> I texted all my friends about how weird this reunion was and wondering how I could convince Phoebe to leave early. We'd already been there about 30 to 45 minutes and this unnamed mystery party host was nowhere to be seen. Phoebe texted me, where are you? I replied in the bathroom, give me a minute. Then I followed that up with, this party's really weird, I'm down to leave soon. She said, why? I said, everyone's being weird. Then someone knocked on the bathroom door, so I couldn't sit in there anymore. I washed my hands quick and left the bathroom, and the guy waiting outside, who looked like one of the younger ones here, said in a very low voice to me, you should leave, that girl isn't who she says she is. I froze for a second, then said, Phoebe? He said, whatever she told you her name is. He then asked what she told me this party was, I said that she told me it was a high school reunion. The guy then smirked and said, Do these people look like they're going to a high school reunion? He left it off with, and I quote, Trust me, leave sooner than later. 
and then he walked into the bathroom and shut the door. Who is the, okay, now I'm curious, because this young guy seems to be trying to save whatever this dude is. He's like, no, nah, I gotta be the guy here. I gotta be the guy here. So I went to the thing, they probably told that young guy, go get him, and he just, like, okay, this is my chance. Went to him, was like, get the fuck out of this thing. You have no idea what you're about to deal with. I almost knocked on the door to get him to come out and further explain, but I thought for a second. I was already suspicious and uncomfortable in this house. That guy just confirmed something weird is going on here. I walked straight to the front door without drawing attention to myself. I still felt people staring at me as I walked to the door. I walked straight from my car in the street and drove home. Phoebe texted me asking where I went. I didn't answer. When I got home, I looked up her number on white pages. That number was not associated with the name Phoebe. The name that came up was Claire Foster. The address that I picked her up at both times is also different than the address that came up on white pages, which made me realize I never saw her leave the house. She was already waiting on the sidewalk both times. I replied to her text, I had to leave, I'm sorry, and blocked her number. My friends all made jokes, and they told me she thought she was weird and off from the start, but they didn't want to tell me that and make me feel bad. My one friend joked that it sounded like I was in the movie Get Out. My friends and- That's what it's called! Is that what it's called? Fucking hey, Mr. Nightmare, me and you! You're the guy, is that the one I'm thinking of? Get. Out. Come on, I, I, I need to know, because I think- It was! Even when I don't even know what the thing is, I can always count. I can always count on some random thing from Mr. Nightmare that helped me with the answers. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.